Motorcycles can be a form of therapy for me. BetterHelp is online therapy. And thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this episode. Therapy helps me to navigate difficult life happenings. And BetterHelp gives me access to therapy with the fewest barriers to negotiate. We have to make a lot of intuitive judgments and decisions in life, and I find that therapy allows me to have a clear enough head to listen to the quiet voice of intuition in the face of big or important decisions. BetterHelp is a very straightforward, convenient, and comfortable place for therapy. You can do your sessions through text, voice, or video. You can change your therapist if you want. Use this link for 10% off your first month of therapy. The link is in the description. Thank you. BetterHelp. It takes about a month of riding every day before synchronizing the controls feels automatic. I'm on Isabel's Husqvarna Svart Pelin 401 because my BMW is broken. Broken and old. Man, I love that 650, but maybe I should just sell it and get an R9T. I need to ride about once a week or else I go crazy. And I do really like this Husqvarna. There's an old motorcycle joke, how many motorcycles is enough? The answer is just one more. The tow truck driver was named Israel. He was from El Salvador, which of course means the savior in Spanish. Riding a motorcycle is a lot like cutting wood with a jigsaw. This is the beginning of my favorite part of this ride. Sometimes I listen to music. I found out why Yogi Berra said, when you see a fork in the road, take it. 
He lived at a fork in the road. His house was between the two fork tines, and his driveway went from one tine to the other tine. So I guess when he was giving directions to his house, he'd tell people, when you see a fork in the road, take it. Yogi was such a good poet that everyone forgot that he was one of the greatest baseball players of all time. And that he was a part of the Normandy invasion. There's a line in this novel so great that I bought the book two more times so I could find it again. One paperback, one ebook. She says, I'd always thought of these types of machines as toys for uneducated people who didn't care about the environment, but maybe they weren't. Maybe this was a kind of meditation. I felt connected to everything and the motor volume held me at a level of alertness I wasn't used to. I kept waking up and then waking up from that and then waking up even more. Was everything redneck actually mystical? You bet your ass, Miranda. Sometimes riding a motorcycle feels like floating. This is 343% speed. When friends who ride visit me from out of town, I take them on this route so they'll say nice things about California nice things about Los Angeles. Sometimes riding a motorcycle feels like floating. If I hadn't been operating a GoPro and a drone and a motorcycle during this shot, I definitely would have remembered to turn off my blinker. There's this documentary called Love the Beast about Eric Bana's love of his Ford Falcon coupe. He bought it when he was 15 and kept it through all his fame and fortune. He put hundreds of thousands of dollars into it, entered a rally, and wrecked it. He was so distraught, he thought he'd sell it, but Dr. Phil told him no. Dr. Phil said, I mean, come on, it's a car, right? No, it isn't. It's a symbol of your history. It is a thread of continuity from whence you came to where you are. Dr. Phil may have been wrong about bad Barbie, but he's right about Banna's car and my 07 BMW. Cost be damned, I'm getting it fixed.